Hello students, today I am going to discuss on the topic drawing and description of shopper and shopping tools. Prehistoric archaeology studies past human societies, that is, before the existence of written records. Primarily through the recovery and analysis of material culture and the environmental data that have been laid by those early men, which include artifacts, biofacts, and ecofacts. Thus, prehistory archaeologists employ a wide range of different procedures, which can be considered to be both a science and humanity. As we all know from our theoretical knowledge that the nature of prehistoric archaeology is partly discoveries of treasures of the past, partly the meticulous work of scientific analysis, and partly the exercise of creative imagination. For instance, it is toiling in the sun, for excavating in the desert region. It is working with the primitive people to record the living tradition. It is also the pen stacking task of interpretation so that we could understand what these things mean for the past human societies. In this way, prehistoric archaeology is both a physical activity out in the field for exploration work or excavation process or both. And intellectual pursuit in the study or laboratory while analyzing the collected material remains and interpreting them. That is the part of its great attraction. Hence, prehistoric archaeology is an exciting quest, that is, the quest for knowledge about the early men that existed in the distant past. To reconstruct or piece together the past life ways of the ancient but illiterate or illiterate people or communities with the help of their material remains that exist in the form of artifact, biofact, etc is the main objective of prehistoric archaeology. Here our main concern is on the lithic artifacts, on the drawing and description of the chokpo and shopping tool. Before starting an accurate and systematic drawing, all the students of undergraduate level should keep in mind the following points about the orientation of the given specimen, nature of presentation, required instruments and materials, and lastly, the techniques of drawing. What is the difference between a chopper and a chopping tool? A chopper is an universal tool. It has only one side workout, and the remaining surface is represented by the cortex region. Whereas in the case of the chopping tool, it has been worked out from both the surfaces. So it is also known as bifacial tool. Whereas in case of the chopwa, it is known as universal tool. Thus, we can differentiate between these two. While drawing the lithic tools or artifact, that is the chopwa and shopping tools, we use certain rules to achieve an accurate but systematic and regular pattern. In our practical room, each student is allowed to draw sofa and shopping tool to represent lower Paleolithic core tool industry. Then we used to instruct them to draw the sofa or shopping tool 
after keeping its working teeth or working end facing upward. It is strictly followed for all the heavy tools of the lower palatic culture face. Students are further instructed to draw the dorsal surface of the given specimen, either sofa or shopping. The next step is to draw its profile view. Showing its line of profile accurately and clearly. And the third step is the drawing of the ventral surface of the sublight specimen. The fourth or the final step is the drawing of its cross section. It is normally drawn just below the drawing of the dorsal surface. Here, one more important thing for the student is the identification of dorsal and ventral surfaces. We use to identify the dorsal surface by the following points. Number A. The dorsal surface is more convex than the ventral surface. Number B. The dorsal surface poses more flex curves than the ventral. And number C. In the case of the dorsal surface, the cortex region is lesser than the ventral. That is, ventral or lowest poses more cortex region or original pebble surface. Number D. Some tools are very difficult to map out which is dorsal or which is ventral. In this case, we ask the students to hold the tool and confirm the dorsal after suitable hand grip, according to the recommendation of the National Workshop of Lithics, Issues and Problems held in the Northeastern Hill University, Shillong, from 3rd to 5th November 2011. The nomenclatures like Phase 1 and Phase 2 have been suggested for dorsal and ventral surfaces for the difficult cases of identification. Number A, the shape, size, nature of the flex curve and the manufacturing techniques of the given specimen is presented by line drawings. Each line poses a specific meaning. They are straight lines, somewhat curved lines, and more curved lines. For example, the D flex curves that we are produced by block on block or anvil technique and the direct stone hammer techniques are represented by more curved lines than those of the somewhat curved lines which were produced by standard hammer technique. Now come to number B. The secondary flex curves are normally represented by thick and short lines. But curvature of the lines depends on the depth, shallowness, and nature of the flex curves. Now let's come to number C. The stiff or resolve or control flagging technique is represented by vertical straight lines forming right angles to its horizontal base. That is bezel line of the triangular shape or hinge shape flex surfaces. In most cases, a sign of step flagging resembles the shape of a triangular, hence represented by line drawings, that is straight, within the triangular shape flex curve, that is crossed by a number of straight but vertical lines parallel to one another. Now come to number D. Likewise, the faceted striking platform is also represented by a number of straight lines, which are parallel to one another. 
unlike the stay flagging skirts it does not possess a unique or specific shape and size it varies from one specimen to another but it always has a comparatively larger areas than the resolve or control flagging technique number e the broken part or position of an artifact is also represented by line drawings but in this case every two adjacent lines are again joined or connected by another two small but very short lines each short line is drawn on both the terminal and bezel extremities The following instruments and materials are required for a student while drawing a given stone artifact. Some of them are supplied by the department concerned while others are brought by the students concerned. Hence they are divided into two parts. First of all, the students should measure the length of the given specimen, that is the stone artifact. Thereafter, each student should draw two horizontal straight lines on their drawing sheets forming the outer boundaries, proximal and distal ends, that is working teeth and butt end of the given tooth, but leaving some space suitable for drawing the cross section of the same tooth. Secondly, each student should draw an imaginary line across the longitudinal axis of the given tooth, which dissects the specimen into two halves horizontally. To confirm the accurate position, each student should draw a line along its axis, and another line, that is crossing the first longitudinal line at its half length, that is y axis. The next step is fixing the tool in its proper position by filling the gaps using model clay. And measure the highest of its point of each say working teeth but aim the two lateral sides.
if three of these points get similar height, it should be considered that the given specimen is placed and fixed properly. Otherwise, the position of the tool should be changed and repeated the same procedure until the artifact attain its accurate position. After getting its proper position, the tool is then transferred to the drawing sheet. While transferring so, one hand of the student holds the tool with model clay and the other hand of the student holds one set square already placed affixing to the lower horizontal line already drawn as lower margin of the tool. The next step is to find out the prominent ridges or arises and important points which would help is a student while drawing the given specimen accurately. Hence, each student should take a sock stick and gently roll over the dorsal surface of the given tool. So that prominent ridges or arises are marked nicely. While drawing the outline of the tool soap, each student should mark the end points or starting points of the ridges, which will help them while drawing the accurate position of the flex curl of each supplied specimen. Then the outline of the tool is drawn by dots using a set square and a point and serve pencil. The fourth step is to remove the stone artifact from the drawing sheet and place it properly. That is without moving the position already drawn on the drawing sheet with the apex model clay on the drawing table. Thereafter, accurate measurements should be taken by using two set square and a divider or compass or two pieces of paper. The accurate measurements thus taken is again plotted on the drawing sheet but within the drawn outline figure of the specimen. To get an accurate measurement of each point, medial or central, at least three measurements should be taken from three different mark lateral sites already plotted on the boundary line of the supplied tool or point. An arc should be drawn for each measurement by using a compass to get a fixed point. The point where the arc or arches cross is normally considered to be the accurate point which is the desired point. If the tree arc or arches do not cross at the same point, the same process should be repeated. In this way, each student of prehistoric archaeology could find many points one after another and join them along with the boundary points to make the accurate shape of the flex curves present on the specimen. The same procedure is repeated while drawing the outline and different flex curves of the profile and ventral views also. The final step is the drawing of its cross section. It is normally drawn just below the drawing of the dorsal surface.
the cross section of the chopper or chopping tool is normally taken at its half length along its axis where the maximum thickness is also taken. The following points are highly needed for describing a given tool systematically. Prehistoric archaeology studies past human societies primarily through the recovery and analysis of material culture and environmental data that have been laid by those early men. In this way, prehistoric archaeology is both a physical activity out in the field and intellectual pursuit in the study or laboratory while analyzing the collected materials to reconstruct the past life ways of the ancient people with the help of their cultural remains is the main objective of this discipline. Hence, every student of prehistoric archaeology should have the different etiquette knowledge of accurate drawing and systematic description of each artifact, whatever they have collected either from exploration or excavation or even housed in the departmental museum.